Hey creative! I have so many clients that integrate QuickBooks and Dubsado together and I get the question all the time because when you use Dubsado and you process payments through it, they sync over to QuickBooks, but how do you reconcile that pesky fee that comes out of your deposit before it hits your bank? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you two methods I use. Hopefully this will make your integration with QuickBooks and Dubsado much more streamlined. Let's dive in. The reason I created the sales clearing method was because of the sheer volume of my clients' transactions. Trying to match an invoice with a payment and then a merchant fee that's taken out and then the bank deposit can be cumbersome. And then if you're having to do that hundreds or thousands of times a month, it's just crazy. So the sales clearing method allows us to do this on a monthly or quarterly basis. I choose monthly to keep the books up to date. In order for me to illustrate the sales clearing method, I'm going to start by running you through two different methods. So we have the individual transaction method, which is going to show you how you find the payment that came into QuickBooks from your CRM, or it could be a journal entry. How do you match that to the bank deposit and account for the fee that came out of that merchant service, whether it was Stripe or Square. Then I'm going to walk you through a lump transaction situation, which is exactly when I bring in the sales clearing account and I use the quote unquote sales clearing method. This should help you understand the best way that you can record sales into QuickBooks from whatever CRM you're using. And I encourage you to bring any questions on these methods to our Facebook group so that we can help you get set up in the most efficient way possible. So let's dive into this. We'll start with option one, which is going to walk you through how to handle each of these deposits on a transaction basis. We hop into Dubsado in my demo file so that we can take a look. You'll see there are projects in here. These projects have had payments made on them. That is what these bars are. We can go inside of one of the projects. We can look at the invoice and see down here the payments have been made. These payments for the sake of this are made through Stripe. Now we'll hop over to the invoice view where you can see that these have been synced over to QuickBooks and here are the payments that have been made in this month of June. If we go over to QuickBooks, we can also see that there are payments here as well. These are invoices with payments that have been made on them because they have a balance. You'll also notice when you go into QuickBooks, if you go to new and you go to bank deposit, all those payments that came over from Dubsado are sitting in here in this account called undeposited funds. So we need to get this stuff deposited. So we are going to match these transactions with the bank. So if you look at the bank, we can see that there are these Stripe transactions that have come in. For example, if we go over to the bank deposit screen, we'll take a look. So we have this Justice Creative on 6-4, there was a payment for $1,000. If we go look at the bank feeds for that date, we see a deposit of $9.95. For the sake of this video, I have made all the Stripe fees and even $5 so that I can show you how they work. So we see this deposit was on 6-4. So now we're going to go to new, we're going to bank deposit. We're going to find that transaction, it's the $1,000 payment. And we're going to make the date 6-4-2020 so it matches. We want, this is the bank deposit screen. We want this deposit to go to that bank account we were just looking at on this date, but not for $1,000 because that's what the customer paid. That is what they owed, but Stripe took a fee out. I'm going to record this as Stripe for who the charge is going to, and I'm going to put it to bank and merchant fees, and I'm going to make it the negative $5. Again, I used $5 as the fee amount for this specific video so that you guys could follow, follow along. So now that brings us to a deposit of $9.95 on 6-4 going into this bank account. It's for this payment and minus the $5 Stripe fee. So I'm going to say save and close and look what happens. Now that matches. All I have to do is click match and now I'm good. And then I go through the same actions for the next one. So 6-1. I have $4.95. So let's go look in here. Bank deposit for $6.1. There we go. $4.95 up $500. Record that Stripe fee. Go to bank and merchant fees. My $5 fee. Now, again, 
you would use you could use this with Stripe or Square or any sort of payment processor. But what you want to do is you'll go look up the transactions in that payment processor in a report and get the fee so you know how much the amount is. I'm using $5 for the specific purpose of you guys being able to follow along. So now we have the deposit of $4.95, which includes the $500 payment minus the $5 strike fee. Going to that account on, we want that to be 6 one Save and close. There we go. It matches. So let's take a look at a profit and loss report so that you can see what's actually happening here. Go to reports, profit and loss. Make sure you select cash. That's going to give you every transaction you've either received cash for or spent cash on, which is how you file taxes. So we're going to run it at cash and we can see there's $4,000 of income here. And there we are, there are those payments that we were looking at. The payments, have been recorded on the books, brought over from Dubsado, so they count as income. However, they've not all been deposited. Going back, you can see here that we've also recorded $10 in fees. Those are the fees that we were including on each of our deposits. So you can see the fees are going in the right place. So you're receiving the full income for the payments come in through Dubsado and then subtracting out the fee. You can also go underneath sales and look at your invoices and you can see what's been paid here. And by clicking on this drop down, you can see these are the payments that were received. So we received a $600 payment for Ozark Branding Co. and a $400 payment and a $500 payment. But this $500 payment you notice has a no, it's been deposited. This is the one that we just deposited a moment ago. Same thing with this project. The $1,000 was deposited. So these are still waiting to be deposited up here when you go to new and you go to bank deposits, you'll see those sitting here. So we would need to go look up the fees and deposit these with the fees taken out so that we match the bank for the end goal to be able to reconcile the bank account at the end of the month. We've walked through how to handle these on an individual transaction basis, which might be fine and may work for you for a while. Think about the volume increases, right? So maybe you have a hundred or even thousands of these transactions a month. You can see how that's going to become really, really time consuming. This is why I came up with this lump transaction method that I use for all of my clients. I use a sales clearing account to help me get the job done and I do it on a monthly basis. So all the transactions for each month are taken care of in one transaction. Transaction. So I'm going to walk you through that now. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go set up a faux bank account. You'll do this by going to accounting, chart of accounts. I've already done this. However, I'll walk you through how you can set one up yourself. This is a faux bank account where we are going to have the deposits from the bank pass through and then the deposits from Dubsado pass through and the difference will be the fees. You'll see how this works in a moment. But to set up a new account, you'll just go up to new. You want to make sure this is a bank type, cash on hand type, you can call it whatever you want. I call it sales clearing. I also give it this specific number because in my course I teach a chart of accounts that contains these numbers. Once you have the account, now you can go back to your banking screen. So I'm going to actually even go a step further. I'm gonna make a rule. I'm going to copy this text here because this is the bank detail. I'm going to create a rule called Stripe deposits. I'm telling QuickBooks anytime money is coming into, and I'm, for this sake, you could say all bank accounts, it will list all your other accounts here, but I'm going to select just the account that I know Stripe is depositing into, which is this one. So it is all bank accounts for me. When a transaction meets all of these conditions, I'm going to change this to bank text because that is what is always the same when it comes in. So I'm going to paste this text there. The bank text contains Stripe transfer. I don't care about the amount. I'm going to make this deposit go to my sales clearing account and you'll see what happens here. I'm going to hit save and now you can see there's a rule applied to all of these to put them in the sales clearing account and I could click add. A bonus for this little video is that you could actually go into that rule. So I'm going to the rule is being applied to Stripe deposits. I'm going to edit this rule and I'm going to tell it to auto categorize and auto add. So when I hit save all those deposits have now look at three transactions have been added to your books. That means every month as my Stripe transactions are coming in from my bank, they're automatically going to sales clearing. What does that look like? To run a report, you're gonna run balance sheet because it's a bank account, it's an asset account. You can see sales clearing here shows $2,485. If I click on it, it's those transfers that just came in here. And every month, all those transfers with that rule will keep transferring into here. 
Okay, so then the next part is, let's say it's the last day of June. You'll go to new, you'll go to bank deposit now, and you will go in all your transactions that came in here. Remember, these came in from Dubsado. These are the payments from Dubsado, or frankly could be 17 hats or any CRM that you are using that syncs over the payments and the invoices to QuickBooks Online. That goes through payment systems, so you want to be able to subtract out the fee. So now I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to put the date for the last day of the month. And I don't want this bank deposit to go to the bank account. I want it to go to my sales clearing account, save and close. Now let's refresh this report through the end of the month. So you can see that Stripe deposited 395 and then 1495 and 595. And then we went in and pulled the $2,500 sitting in undeposited funds that came over from Dubsado and plopped it in the sales clearing account. And the difference is $15. The difference is what? It's the fees, right? $5 per transaction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record those fees to zero this out. If you were using Stripe or Square or any other uh, merchant service, you would go look up your report, get the amount of the fees on the report for the entire month that you're working on, and then you would use that number. Because we're doing $5, I'm going to create an expense. My expense is going to come out of sales clearing on the last day of the month. It's going to go to bank and merchant fees, and I'll call this Stripe Fees for June, which we know is $15, and we're going to save and close. And there you go. So throughout the month, the bank, as the deposits from Stripe come in, are going to be automatically set to sales clearing. At the end of the month, you're going to gather everything for that same month that is in your undeposited funds, and you're going to deposit it into sales clearing, and your difference will be your fee. Now, you may find that you might be a couple hundred dollars off, and that's because there's a transaction that has gone through that is pending, and maybe the payment didn't go through. Especially if you have a larger volume, you're not going to always get to zero. You're going to get very close to zero, but you'll be off by a few transactions that have been processed, but maybe haven't cleared the bank quite yet. The next thing we can do now is go take a look at the reports at the P&L, run it by cash, and run it through the whole month. And now we can see there's $25 in fees, and these are all the fees. These are the ones we did individually in the first part of this video, and here's the ones that we recorded in the second part of this video. And there you have it, the sales clearing method. Hopefully this helps you create a much more efficient integration between Dubsado and your QuickBooks. I hope that shed some light on this topic for you. If you're interested in learning more about these types of topics, I'd love for you to join my free Facebook community. You'll find the link down below in the description for this video. I hope to see you there. Don't forget to subscribe.